What's going on you guys? Welcome to the Single Guy Channel. My name's Lloyd, bringing you practical and actionable dating advice that really works, not some mainstream nonsense. That is a very relevant statement to make because we're gonna be talking about sexually transmitted diseases today, or more formally known as sexually transmitted infections or STIs. The reason why we call them that is because not everything is a disease, not everything is something that uh, is like a virus or something like that. It could be a bacterial infection, or it could be just something that you're allergic to. You know, that's not necessarily a disease. So this encompasses a wi much wider spectrum of things that you're probably going to encounter okay there is a lot of misinformation about this in fact most people what most of what people know is either wrong or it's exaggerated um, and a lot of the information that people get is from either when they were in grade school or from their dumbass friends okay so this whole thing this whole video is designed to be a video that's a frank talk about what sexually transmitted diseases are um, how to prevent them and what you're actually what you could actually expect to experience you know being a sexually active person in today's modern modern era. Okay, so much horrible information uh, is, is out there regarding this, and it's because people just don't want to talk about it. I think it's one of those things that people brush underneath the table that they're like, you know, oh, we don't talk about that, or you know, if somebody you know knows something, they don't want to talk about it with other people because then they'll think they'll have one. Um, I don't really give a shit, you know. Like this is this video is here for you guys to learn, and is here for you guys to actually you know be smarter about your dating lives. I want to encourage people to have more sex. That's the whole point of this channel, and so uh, I want people to do it in a very safe and uh, something that's not going to harm their health. Basically, what we're going to start with in this video is we're going to start with talking about all the misinformation out there, all the stupid things that you probably heard that are wrong. Then we're going to talk about the actual diseases that you can expect to encounter, what the symptoms are, you know, what really happens and how to prevent them. Uh, and then we're going to talk about the basically what I think is the appropriate way to handle yourself if you're a sexually active person and my own experience when it comes to STIs, you know, what actually happens. Okay, I have a pretty big sample size of people to pull from <laughs> and I have friends that are even more promiscuous than me. So um, I think I'm not a bad person to talk to about this. So the first thing is that people usually get their information, like I said, from school or their dumbass friends. The reason why people turn to their dumbass friends and the reason why a lot of rumors get started is because the education in school is so bad that people turn to people that don't know what they're talking about. The sex education in school is kind of like the drug education that you get. It's basically 100% to discourage you, if in, the, in, the, in the case of drugs, it's 100% to discourage you from taking drugs and in the sex education case, it's it dis designed to discourage you from having sex. They promote abstinence um, and then they're like if you really 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 have to have sex <laughs> uh, make sure you do it in the most safest way possible okay you know wear a condom use a dental dam look I don't know if anyone has used a dental dam <laughs> who's watching this video I have never heard about anybody using a dental dam if you use a dental dam please comment in the comment section below I would love to hear about it <laughs> I remember when I left my sex education class I didn't want to have sex ever you know, I was like, I'm never having sex. I'm never going through that. I'm never putting myself at risk. <laughs> uh, so it worked for a little bit, but obviously, you know, <laughs> not for long. So the first thing that you need to know uh, about sex and what the schools tell you, which is, you know, not exactly true, is that there's no such thing as safe sex. I know they say if you have to have sex, you, you know, have safe sex. Um, any time that you're exchanging fluids with somebody, any time you're that close and intimate with somebody, there's a risk involved. Whether you're kissing them, whether you're giving oral, whether you're actually doing penetration, there is going to be a risk involved of you getting some sort of disease. And that's the truth of the matter, okay? Now the good news is that I'm going to start with it's not as bad as these schools are telling you. A lot of this stuff, I, like I said, is designed to scare you into being abstinent. Okay, so what actually happens? What are some actual diseases that you can encounter. Well, the first one that people worry about the most is HIV. HIV uh, stands for human immunodeficiency virus, and it's basically what, you know, if, if you leave it long enough by itself, it turns into AIDS, which can kill you, okay? In the 80s, people were really scared about this. The stats for this, you know, disease have gone down a lot. You know, a lot less people have HIV than had it in the past. It's The, the rates in the United States are super, super, super low. Um, and the people who do have HIV, a lot of them live very happy, normal lives. In fact, most of them live very happy, normal lives. And the reason why is because we have treatments that can keep the virus down to a certain level where it's not really affecting their lives. It's not actually affecting their immune system anymore. And in fact, the levels are so small that they can actually have sex with somebody regularly and not give them 
spreading the virus. Um, and so a lot of people don't know that. The worst part about having HIV is knowing you have HIV and knowing other, what other people are gonna think about you. You know, Not everyone's like me, not everyone's like well-educated on this subject. And so a lot of people tend to think very crazy and negative things towards other people that have HIV. Um, and so that's probably the worst thing that happens with their life. Very, it's very highly unlikely that you're gonna get HIV unless you slept with like Charlie Sheen, like 6,000 people. But if you do get it, you can still live a very healthy and normal life. Okay, so let's talk about the next one that people are worried about the most, which is herpes. In school, you basically learn that one in four people in the United States have herpes. Herpes is not curable. Herpes is a virus, just like HIV. Um, and if you get symptoms from it, you usually get like sores, kind of like the cold sores that you got in your mouth. Genital herpes is the same thing, but um, it's, it's, on, it's around your dick or around your vagina, whatever you have. If you get this, 90% of the time, you're not gonna be experiencing any symptoms. You won't even notice you have it. I probably have it right now and I don't notice any symptoms, I don't have anything, every test that I've gotten has come back negative, but like if one in four people in the United States have it and I've slept with, I don't know, between 200 to 300 people, I probably have this shit but I don't experience any symptoms and it hasn't inconvenienced my life in any way. Now, if you're part of the one unlucky 10% that do experience symptoms from it, and I do know people in this, what usually happens is that you'll get sores maybe a few times a year for one to two years, and then your body usually figures it out and you don't usually get that many, um, that many sores anymore. And then when you get one, it usually takes only a few days for it to go away, especially if you're taking your medication. So if you're taking your medication, you don't have open sores, it's very difficult for you to give it to somebody else. And now I know what you're probably thinking, you're probably thinking like, well, if it's really not that bad, then why are people worried about it? Because a lot of people believe very silly things. You know, in the schools, when they tell you about this, they don't tell you what actually tends to happen when you get this disease. And so a lot of people get scared into not having sex because of it, okay? Um, but the truth is, is that herpes is not really that bad of a virus. If one in four people had a very debilitating virus that seriously affected their health, there would be a huge demand for it. And there would be enough demand that drug companies and, you know, uh, healthcare companies would actually try and fix it. Um, but because there isn't, there isn't really much of a need for it. And if that doesn't really convince you that you know a lot of these diseases are kind of blown out of proportion, well, let's talk about this next one, which is HPV, okay? If you're watching this video, like I said, there's no such thing as safe sex, you probably have HPV. If you've had sex with more than one person or one person, you probably have it. In fact, most sexually active people have HPV. The reason why most people have it and don't know they have it is because it doesn't give you any symptoms if you're a guy. And in fact, it's impossible to test for it as well. The only symptoms that you get are if you are a woman, if you get HPV, then it, it can slightly uh, raise your risk, like I think 35% uh, for ovarian cancer. So just make sure that you're getting um, you're getting checked out for that. Um, but the vast majority of women who have it, um, they have one that, that heals itself, and so they also don't get any symptoms from it. But the virus is still in your system. Okay, so those are the diseases that are the ones that people usually worry about the most, but they're probably not the ones that are gonna give you any trouble. The ones that will give you trouble are gonorrhea and chlamydia, and these are by far the most common STIs that you're gonna get. Um, I've gotten chlamydia twice, and basically it's a disease that you get. It feels a little bit uncomfortable to pee for a little bit. You go to the doctor, and then you get some azithromycin, which is like some penicillin. You take that, and within a week, it's all cleared up, okay? So you're not allowed to have sex during that period of time that you're taking the drug, so you can't give it to somebody else. Um, so you just have to wait like a week or something like that. Um, gonorrhea, I've never gotten it but I've heard people that have gotten it and apparently it hurts like a bitch. <laughs> so it really hurts to pee, but you can get a shot and get it cleared right up. So those are the two diseases, the major ones that you wanna worry about. Now, uh, how do I conduct myself when it comes to you know, having good sexual health? Well, well, what do I do? Well, uh, if I'm having sex with somebody for the first time and I don't really know them that well, I'm gonna wear a condom. And I would encourage everyone to do that here. Now, I know people say that you can't tell if someone has an STI, like there's no way to tell, but the two diseases that I've gotten from, the, I know the girls that I got them from, and I could kind of tell that they were, that they had something or like, it was, it was highly likely that they did. Uh, and the way you, way you know that is like, look, if it's really, really easy to sleep with a girl, like you haven't done anything, and I've been going out a lot, I know how it kind of goes down. If I've been talking to a girl for a while and she likes me and then we sleep together, that's a pretty normal thing. But if I've been, if I walk up and talk to a girl and within like five seconds she's grabbing my dick and is like asking me where I live, okay, this girl, um, she's probably done that to another guy, maybe even earlier that night, okay? So she's probably been around the block more than a few times and she's probably engaging in risk behavior. If you have find a girl like that, I'm not saying you, you know, you, it's up to you if you wanna sleep with her, but if you do sleep with her, definitely 100% wear 
wrap that shit up. Now, if you've been seeing a girl for a little bit, um, you've been seeing her like three or four times, you know, at that point in time, I'm, I'm probably not gonna wear a condom at that point. We're comfortable with each other, we trust each other. Um, I get checked regularly. I get checked about three or four times a year, which is three or four times a year more than most people get checked. You know, some people that talk the most about STIs and say, oh, that girl's got diseases or like that guy's dirty, definitely riddled with diseases. Um, they get checked the least and that's kind of crazy, you know? In the porn industry, for instance, um, a lot of people are getting checked regularly and so they have pretty good sexual health. So that's most of my experience when it comes to STIs. I, I'd say I've, the only ones that I know about, the only diseases that I know for sure that I've gotten uh, has been chlamydia twice. I, I've been tested for pretty much everything else and um, the ones that I can get tested for, I, I, it's all come back negative pretty much every single time. And the, the two times that I did get chlamydia, the worst part about it wasn't the actual disease. The actual disease really doesn't do that much to you. I, it, it was telling the other girls that I was sleeping with uh, that I had it. And so uh, the first time there was one other girl that I did tell, um, she wasn't too mad. She was mad about, she was mad at me for other shit. And then the second time it happened, the girl wasn't even mad at all. She was just like, oh, we can't have sex for a week, boo hoo. <laughs> and then we moved on. And that's kind of the experience that I've seen with a lot of other people. So I know guys that have, that their number is in the thousands. You know, they've had sex with thousands of women, whether they just, you know, they go out a lot and they have a really good game um, or they're famous. For them, it's kind of the same too. They've gotten chlamydia a few times and that's about it. I, again, hopefully you've seen from this that um, a lot of the stuff that you learn about when it comes to STIs is not entirely true. A lot of it's myths and, and misnomers and stuff like that. And so hopefully this educated you uh, a little bit better on how to conduct yourself when it comes to sexual health. Again, you guys, I would say wear a condom if you're having sex with somebody for the first time. There, there is a marked difference though uh, between how men experience STIs and women experience STIs. Men usually notice the symptoms quicker than women do um, and women don't. And so because of that, I think that's part of the reason why STIs actually do a lot more damage to women than they do to men because it's on the inside, it can affect a lot more things. I um, mean, it's a lot more difficult for them to spot or, or for them to notice that it's happening to them. So women do experience a little bit more uh, stronger symptoms. When it comes to sexual health, the thing that you really should be worrying about is having a kid, okay? Because hopefully you've seen that a lot of these STIs are curable or manageable. If you have a kid, that is a serious investment on your life. That's seriously gonna affect your lifestyle and the way that you live and that's something that you should be worried about uh for sure so be safe when it comes to that for sure guys <laughs> all right so that's all i have to say about this subject if you guys have any questions or any like little things that you want to know about maybe there's something that you heard you can ask me if it's true i'm well versed on this subject i might post a few more things about it but i kind of wanted to keep this video to around 10 minutes um so i could you know make sure that you guys are still paying attention um and i thought i could fit everything decent in there uh with this video so uh if you guys made it to the end consider subscribing uh, if you like this video please hit the like button. I know there's going to be a lot of people that disagree with some of the stuff that I said that are going to be disliking it. So uh, hopefully not too many. But if you're interested in my one-on-one -on -one mentorship program where I teach guys how to get the girls that they want in their life, shoot me an email, thesingleguy2017 at gmail.com. Thanks a lot, y'all. Good luck out there.